Oh, I've messed up. Oh, now you've heard of sleep talking, you've heard of sleep walking, but what about sleep ordering? Well, that, my friends, is exactly what I've done. You see, I'm converting a van into a camper van. And to be fair, the job's actually going really well. Slower than I'd like, but it's going in the right direction. All of my money currently is going on the actual conversion. But there's been so many things I want to buy for the outside of the van, because through this whole conversion of converting my old camper van into a newer high-end camper van, I want to do stuff on the outside but nothing needs doing. You see, it just looks absolutely beautiful. You see, that must have been on my mind when I went to sleep that day because the following day, I woke up with an email from Van Pimps saying, your order confirmation for £106. Now, Van Pimps are a company that do a load of interior and exterior fancy bits for your van. Do you want to fit side windows or a headliner or the bed or curtains or sidebars and front splitters? No matter what, Van Pimps have got it. And I was on their website a few days ago, so I think that was just ingrained on my mind. I woke up with an order confirmation. I thought, you know what? I'm not even going to check what I ordered. I'm going to wait till it arrives and go from there. Imagine my surprise when I'm at work one day and she sends me this picture and says, this just arrived. First thing is a bonnet brow. I've got to heat it up before it goes on to it's by the radiator. That just goes on the outside, stretches into place with all these loops and this rope. And we've put the rope over that side, just a little piece dangling so that when it's heated up on the top, when it's settled in, we can come down and just give it another pull, tighten it down because it's not going to be super tight at the minute. I mean, once it's heated up and we've stretched the leather, it will get all these little creases out but i like the fact you can still see all the curvatures of the van i kind of like it what do you reckon there was three things in that package this is the next one i got four union jack metal dust caps for my five wheels got one on the back door haven't i and then we've got one big item left and it is a front splitter this is going to make the van look about three inches lower yes that's three inches Got a full fitting kit with it, but not really any instructions, so this should be fun. I've got three bolts with nuts and a load of self-tapping screws. So I would assume you've got three bolts that go underneath the bumper and then the self-tapping screws all around the sides. Now, come with three bolts. See these ridges here? One, two, three. They're bolted straight through. Now, I've put the bolt in from the top. So if the nut ever does fall loose, the bolt's not going to go down onto the road. It's still going to stay in place. It then come with eight self-tapping screws, but only place for four. Underneath the side, there was only two holes. So I've drilled two extra holes on each side to be able to hold it in place. There you go. Check that out. <laughs> I kind of like it. I never thought I'd actually want that splitter, but I'm kind of chuffed that I got it. Same with the bonnet brow. I've never really been a fan of them. But I'm not being funny, that does look quite nice. RIP the go faster stripe that was on there. Now let's rewind back a few days and do some electrics. We've got all of this to be able to put onto this board that you see me make in my last video. We have got our DC to DC charger, our solar MPPT solar charge controller, our blue smart battery charger, our 3000, uh, 3000 watt inverter. We've got our energy smart shunt, a couple of really high end buzz bars, loads of isolation switches and a fuse box. You sat wondering, what about 240 electric hookup? Well, we don't actually go onto campsites that often, but because of that, we don't want the plug on the side. We don't use it that often. We've got something else. We'll show that towards the end of the video. First items on are these three isolations. You can see how big and beefy they are. One goes from the battery to the buzz bar. The next one goes from the solar to the buzz bar. The next one goes from the DC to DC charger to the buzz bar. We've got them all pointing in the same direction, which is off. As soon as you turn it like that, it's the power going into the buzz bar. So I know that that one is turned on. At the minute, they're off. Next is the 12 volt fuse box. So we've got the cable, main negative cable coming down to there to the negative buzz bar where all the negative wires will come through. The positive wires will come through here for that side. The positive wires will come through here for that side. And then that gets covered up with a nice safety cover and that is that so far so we've got the 3000 watt energy inverter that's the ups function coming out that goes underneath through a hole out to the plug just there we have got the orion that's the dc to dc charger the cables will go out of there we've left enough space between that and the mppt solar charge control unit again the cables go through a hole down there. Got enough space for ventilation to go circulating through them both. Over here, I've got the blue smart controller. Now, I did want the cable to go down and out the back, but I just... I haven't made the hole big enough and I don't really want to be cutting up the new carpeted panel. Again, 
the cables go out the bottom just there that is going to charge up the leisure batteries when we're, when we're on electric hookup over here you've got the negative bus bar the positive bus bar the Renergy shunt the 12 volt fuse box and the three different uh, isolation things i don't know why but i really do feel like i'm missing something on here and i can't figure it out you watch, it'll come to me eventually. This has to be the biggest electrics hack ever. Get yourself a board, get it covered, and sit in your living room and work away on it. You save you being cramped underneath the bed while you're doing everything. But absolutely everything is wired up now. Let's give you a quick air tour, shall we say. All I need to do now is get my solar cables that are coming into the van go straight into there my dc to dc cable straight into there i've got to connect to my battery bank my negative and my positive i've got a fuse to go on there to do that and then it's just a case of routing all the 12 volt electrics straight into that i think the only thing that i've regret about doing this and it's it's going to come and bite me in the butt eventually i would imagine I've put all my fuses are going to be behind the board just to make it look that little bit cleaner. I'm well chuffed with how it's turned out. The next job isn't really electrical based, but it means we've got to chuck everything up that side of the van. You see, we've got the slats just there, but you can see how two of them overhang. That one and that one. And that's because they buffer up on the back just there. They go beyond the back bed brace, and that's because we're going to be building something on top of there eventually. So we've got to trim those to outside two down and then secure them on that middle beam all the way in. The reason it's only the middle beam that gets it secured in is because I'm fat and uh, there's a bit of flex in the bed. Now, if you only secure on the outside too, you're flexing and it's pulling the outside beams inwards slightly. If you only secure to the middle, then it just pulls the slats in slightly if it does bend. I posted all this on TikTok and the amount of people that are slating it saying it's gonna catch fire and stuff like that. I just wanna quickly address how I've overthought everything regarding that. So for number one, there's gonna be a gap between this board and the actual wall of the camper van. So there's gonna be air circulation behind it. Any heat will rise out, drawing the cold air in through the bottom. The same for the inverter. You can see we've got a big hole there. So when, when the air is rising out and bringing the cold air in, that will suck the hot air out of there and come up and draw the cold air in. On another note, there is a gap between the inverter and the actual panel. It's only to touching by just the rubber feet then the same over for the MPPT solar charge control unit and the DC to DC charger they're big units so they've naturally got these metal fins those metal fins are clear all the way down to the bottom on both of them they're in a line vertical for the same reason for convection any heat that's generated through these will just go straight up and out the top drawing the cold air in both from there and from there Plus, it's all fused and stuff. I'm doing those slats for the bed, and that cat's come back again. But look, she's made herself comfy all the way up there. <laughs> I kind of feel dead bad because I need to really get that mattress and the sheets and stuff at her up there. I need to get that back now I've done the slats and just chuck them back on there. But I don't want to disturb her, so I'm just going to leave her for a bit. Just to be extra sure there's going to be no issues, I've decided to take a little bit of the carpet out, drill an absolute ton of holes just so I've got more ventilation, heat ventilation going out the back and up. Now, before this could go in, I needed to do a few little extra changes to the first fix electrics that I already have in the boot of the van. You see, all these little cables just up here, they're all the first fix 12 volt cables. So you've got a few of them, they're all labeled up. If you go to the max fan, if you go to the shower fan, all those sort of cables that are hidden in the wall. I had to extend a few of them. Down there, we've got a DC to DC positive cable with our solar positive and negative. Now I think it's time to get it in. Now, although it does look like a bit of a spaghetti junction in some areas, everything's all labelled up nicely so I can get that all started. I'm going to get rid of all these little thinner wires and thread them around the back. They're going to come out of these holes here going straight into the fuse box. Yep, that's me underneath the bed. I'm a bit crooked, <laughs> but we'll get this done and then we'll be able to see exactly what's what. That's what I mean. So they're all coming in to the positive terminals, all coming into the negative terminals. That's just not connected up to power. And I even made a little chart just so, so that I know what goes to where. I'll have to make a much better version of that chart to be able to keep it. To be fair, I could do with making a couple. Leave one in the front and then leave one somewhere in the back, just so I always know what's where. And with the cover on, that's looking quite smart. It's really coming together now. We've ran the positive from the alternator up to here. Now that's fused underneath the passenger seat. That fuse is out, that's why that's not on. Plus the engine's not on as well. 
but as soon as I put a fuse in there, that'll be live through to that top switch just over there. The solar, we've added the positive and negative coming from the solar panels, and as you can tell, that's on. I've checked it on the Victron app. That's all working. That is now live to that switch just there. We have got the ground from the DC to DC charger bolted into the chassis with a riven up. And then the batteries are wired up. So we've gone positive to positive on the other battery, then up to the isolation switch that little red wire goes over to the Renergy shunt then we have got the negative over to the negative on the other battery then the negative for the whole system comes off the other battery straight round to the Renergy shunt that's 400 amp hours i just need to secure those batteries down now in theory i can switch the isolation switch for both the batteries and the solar and the solar will start charging the batteries so I've just turned the bottom two isolations on and it actually works. So the bottom one is to isolate the batteries. The next one up is to isolate the solar coming in. So I turned them both on and the solar started charging the batteries. Don't get me wrong, they're already at over 80%. So it was only charging up by like 50 watts. It was just on that absorption level. It's really starting to come together now. I think all I need to do is secure the batteries into place. They need to be secured. We're going to be putting a box over there and that's where an electric hookup thing is going to go. I'll show you that another time. On the back of the inverter, we need to figure that out because we'll come off the sockets to probably a consumer unit and then that'll go off to one socket in the kitchen, one socket underneath the kitchen, which is where the induction hub's going to cook in, uh, click into, and then probably another one off to near the seating area. The rest of the 12 volt appliances, so we've got stuff like extra lighting for some of the overhead units on the other side of the van, we've got the external USB charger, they all need to be ran over and up to the 12 volt fuse box, but that can't go in until the bulkhead's in. And that's because when that bulkhead's in, the consumer unit's gonna fasten to the back of it and the cables are gonna run along it and in the little gap at the top down to the fuse box all the way back over there. And that was a great weekend, well spent, because I feel productive. I've done something really well. I've got another step closer to the finished product. And it was a big step as well. Let's face it, Campervan Electrics scares so many people, but there's so many advice out there. Greg Verdi is a great one if you want to get some advice. Check him out on YouTube. But I'm back in work. I'm in my truck. I've just started, so everything's a mess. And now I'm going to start doing a lot more research over a solar, a solar, a solar dump, I think they call it, a Solaris dump from a hot water system. That's something I've been playing around with in my mind for quite a while. It's basically when the solar panels have fully charged the batteries, you've still got solar up there, but that energy is not being absorbed into the van or used in any way, shape or form. Because I have a lot of solar on the roof, it charges up the batteries dead quick. So I'm figuring out a way of doing relays and stuff where when the, it detects when the batteries are fully charged and then it takes that extra solar panels, the solar power, and heats up the hot water system. It's a smart idea and I'm working on it. You can find out more by simply liking and subscribing to the channel. Peace out guys.